Hey guys, earlier in the summer, I came across a tomato hornworm on one of my tomato plants outdoors, and it did a lot of damage very quickly to a tomato plant. And so today I'm going to tell you the easiest way to get them under control and how to prevent them from even attacking your tomatoes. But it's really critical because tomatoes can be totally defoliated in a matter of 24 hours, and they can also damage the tomatoes themselves, they'll start eating those once they go through all the leaves. So I'm going to go through every step along the way of how to get them under control and what you can do to prevent them and a few extra tips, but a couple of secret weapons as well. So guys, if you do see a tomato hornworm on your tomatoes, there is one instance where you want to leave it on there and allow nature to take its course. And it's a very specific time and it's very easy to identify. And I'm going to show you a little bit later in the video, some photographs of exactly what to look for when you see the tomato hornworms. If you see this particular hornworm, you want to leave it alone and allow it to complete the life cycle. So by leaving it alone, it's a very good way to help your garden in the future months to come. Now there's generally two types of hornworms. There's the tobacco hornworm and then there's the tomato hornworm. They both look very similar, but there's a couple of distinctive features you can see on them but they both end in the same result on your tomatoes. They will completely devastate them if you don't know what to do. So guys, I'll pepper the video with some photographs as I'm talking about the tomato hornworm, but the easy way to identify the tomato hornworm is one has stripes and the other has a V pattern, a white stripe or a V pattern. Now the white stripes on the tomato hornworm means it's actually a tobacco hornworm. If you see a V pattern, on the side in the stri white stripe, that is the tomato hornworm, but they will both attack your tomato plant. So guys, some people are reluctant to kill the hornworms because they think it turns into the beautiful hummingbird moth, and that's not exactly true. There's two types of moths that lay these. One is the sphinx moth, and the other is the hawk moth, and both of those develop in the two types of hornworms we're talking about. Now, the hornworms have two natural predators. One is ladybugs, and the other are green lace wings. And if you're thinking about adding ladybugs to your garden, sometimes that's not a great idea because a lot of times you'll put ladybugs in the garden that you've ordered through the mail and they'll all fly away. The other thing is, is like a lot of people that are selling ladybugs online are not growing them in a controlled environment. They're actually going out into the wild and collecting ladybugs, which destroys the ladybug populations in those potential areas. So unless they specifically say that they are cultivating the ladybugs and creating them growing them in a confined area and not collecting from the wild. I wouldn't recommend ladybugs. As I said earlier, a lot of them are just going to leave your garden and fly away. So guys, a really effective way to get the hornworms once they become quite large and easy to spot is manual removal. But a lot of times it's hard to see the hornworms as they're in their initial stages. They're very small, but I'm going to give you a secret weapon we can use later to get rid of those small hornworms and especially the large ones that can devastate our tomato plants. So guys, as I said earlier in the video, is there is a specific time you want to leave your hornworms completely alone. If you see a very large hornworm and there's a lot of cocoons on its back, that means it has been infested with parasitic wasp. It's been, the eggs have been laid on the back of the hornworm and those are going to develop into more parasitic wasp. They're going to be very beneficial for your garden. Now, a lot of people think when you say wasp, you're thinking of the paper wasps that have the large nest you might see on the eve of a house, but that is not exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about a wasp that will benefit your garden in a great way, and you don't have to worry about them attacking or stinging you. Now, one of the best ways to control them is through using BT, and it's a type of bacteria. It's perfectly safe for people. It's safe for other beneficial insects. And the main thing that BT will kill is other types of caterpillars and leaf eating those type of insects worm type looking insects but you're perfectly safe in using bt it's an organic solution to it but there's a lot of different ways to get them under control but bt i would recommend is one of the best now as i mentioned earlier there is a secret weapon and it kind of looks like something a secret agent would carry but it is a black light flashlight you could go out into your garden at night, shine this on the tomato plants, and the hornworms will actually have a glow to them. Even the small ones will show up very easily. So just remember, a black light, I'll link one down below, a black light can be around 10 or 12 bucks, and it's really one of those things that you need to go out to the garden and just take a look at nighttime and see if your tomato plants are infested with hornworms. It's really, truly the secret weapon against the hornworms. So getting the hornworms under control is very critical at the early stages of your tomato plant because if the tomato plant is totally defoliated it's going to put its energy back into recovering those leaves 
and not so much into fruit production. You need to remember that if you do see it, even one small hornworm, you need to take action quickly because it's going to really slow down the tomato production. And the sooner you get it under control, the faster the plant will have to continue making those delicious tomatoes. So one of the tricks master gardeners use when it comes to tomatoes and peppers that might be attacked by hornworms is to plant basil, to put a lot of basil in your garden because the smell of basil will overpower the smell of the tomatoes and the moths that lay their eggs will be not be able to recognize the tomato as easily. It's not impossible, but basil will definitely cut down on any possible chance of hornworm infestation in your tomatoes. So just remember, planting that around the garden is a really a great way for not only hornworms, but some other insects that might try to attack your tomatoes. Now, bird feeders in the vegetable garden is not really a new idea, but it's one that a lot of people don't think about. But putting four or five bird feeders around the four corners of your vegetable garden will really help, not only with the hornworms, but other insects as well. The birds come in, they feed off of the bird seed, and also go into the garden looking for the insects that they also want. So just remember, four or five well-placed bird feeders around that area will really cut down on insects. Of course, they're going to eat some beneficial insects as well, but especially the hornworms that they really like. So speaking of birds, if you're raising chickens, allowing the chickens to come into your garden, they'll also feed on the hornworms as that's one of their favorite things to find among the plants and they will eat them quickly. Hopefully they won't do too much damage, but if you're allow ha having free range chickens, allowing them into your vegetable garden might be a great way to get the hornworms under control before you even realize you have an issue. So guys, another way to easily identify if you do think you have hornworms is to take a look on the leaves and around the base of the plant. If you see something that's about the size of a green pea or slightly larger and it's an extremely dark color, almost a black greenish color, then you probably are seeing the droppings of the hornworm. Just remember, it's good to inspect because a lot of times the hornworms do hide on the underside of the leaves when they're really small. Also look at the base of the tomato and around the tomato plant. Sometimes they'll leave their droppings right there on the leaf itself. So guys, the first time I ever saw a hornworm, I had no idea what it was, but it kind of frightened me because that horn on the hornworm looks like it's a massive stinger. But in reality, the hornworm cannot sting you at all, can't bite you. They're perfectly harmless towards humans. And so if you pick them off, you don't have to worry about that being an actual stinger. It's just a little horn on the end of the worm. So during the day, as I said earlier, the hornworms hide below the leaves. They're most active at night and early, early morning. So that's the time to go out and look for them is after dark. Or if you're an early riser, go to the garden early in the morning, five, right after sunset, 5 to 6 a.m., and just take a look around the leaves and see if they're still actively eating if you do see some issues with your tomatoes. Now, if you're opting to go with the, applying the BT to your garden, that's a great option, but you want to make sure that you reapply the BT if you're overwatering or if you've had a heavy rain, you want to reapply that to make sure that it is on the leaves because the hornworms, when they eat that, that is going to kill them. Now, in addition to the BT, you can also use diatomaceous earth and you can put it at the base of your tomato plant and maybe apply it to a little bit of the lower leaves. You don't want to put it on your flowers, but you just want to put it anywhere towards the bottom half of your plant and that will also keep keep your hornworms under control and get rid of them before they get out of control. So guys as far as home remedies go I can't swear by this but I have heard that two tablespoons of cayenne pepper powder mixed with about 16 ounces of water sprayed on the tomato leaves can also be a deterrent towards hornworms. So that's an interesting concept. I don't know if it's true or not but if you want to try it that might help as well but again I've never tried it myself, but it's just one of those little home remedies that's kind of been stuck in my head for a long time, so I thought I'd mention that as well. So again, hornworms do the majority of their damage at night, and so you'll want to use your secret weapon if you decide to go with the black light option, and it can be kind of fun for kids to go out and do something like that with them, and they might actually enjoy doing hornworm collection. So guys, if you're like me and you're obsessed with tomatoes and you want to grow as many varieties as you can, Hornworms are absolutely going to be something you're going to deal with. So it's better to do a little bit of prevention, a little bit of hunting, and a little bit of different experimentation to make sure they don't attack your tomato plants this year. So if you found something interesting or helpful, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And if there's anything I left out or there's a way you control hornworms, I hope you'll leave it down in the comments. I'm always researching this topic. So have a great day, guys.